There's a Nintendo franchise where a man with a mustache in all red and blue reigned supreme for decades. I'm talking about Mario, of course. However, he also has a brother named Luigi. They both have been seen in a ton of games, but which one is better? Which brother is the actual king? Well, let's find out. Now, since the beginning of time, Mario has been the main character and protagonist of the long-running and highly successful Mario franchise. He was created by Japanese video game designer Shigeru Miyamoto and also serves as the main mascot of Nintendo. He made his first appearance as the protagonist of the arcade game Donkey Kong, released in 1981. Now Luigi is his younger, taller twin brother, and is the second major protagonist of the franchise. Originally an exact copy and just a simple palette swap of Mario, he was created to facilitate a second player option. However, since the two-player mode was dropped from most main series Mario games, he has gained his own identity and personality. Throughout his life, he has lived in Mario's shadow, developing both cowardly and heroic tendencies. Despite this, he has helped and fought alongside his brother on many occasions. So as time went on, he became more important. However, which one is the better hero? Is Mario the characterful, skillful and interesting man we need? Or Luigi? Well, we will look at the following points to find out which one is better. Story and personality, power and abilities, and overall design and animations. Let's start with the very first point. Now, when it comes to this, Mario is at a disadvantage. Throughout the games, he has always played the silent protagonist. In almost every main Mario game, he was quite simplistic, didn't express himself, and only got involved because he wants to help for some reason. His motives are always extremely vague. He always just does it. There's no particular reason for him to help Peach or any other character like Daisy. In a game like Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, he at least had a clear reason for defeating Wario, taking back the land that was originally his. However, something like this was only really seen in one game. So that's quite a bad thing because you don't really know the guy. What drives Mario to help out everyone around him? If you look at a comic book hero like Spider-Man, then you can see a clear and deep motive right away. He was motivated by the murder of a father figure, his uncle Ben. Yet his driving force is guilt, not revenge. He must live forever with the knowledge that he could have prevented the killing if he had not been so self-absorbed. This creates an interesting character because you can project yourself onto him and imagine the scenario and the feelings attached to it. While someone like Mario is an empty shell. His reckless thrill chasing has left him a hollow shell of his former self. Just look. Even his reactions and interactions with others in the games are extremely limited. Even story-driven ones like the Paper Mario franchise weren't really used to expand on Mario's personality and story. Now Luigi is a completely different story and there's one reason for this. He has always been the number two. Now Nintendo could have ignored this fact, but instead they used it as the foundation of his character. It has made him insecure, sad, and forces him to prove himself in order to get attention from his peers. Luigi is portrayed as timid, a bit of a coward, extremely worrisome, and is considerably self-conscious. However, he overcomes his fears and acts like a hero when necessary, such as when someone he knows is in danger. This is what makes him a million times more interesting than Mario right away. He has to overcome his own fear. And even this has its own origin story, where Mario is actually the villain. He's the source of Luigi's problems. Well, some of them. This already creates a real motive, and when it comes down to it, Luigi cares more about his friends than Mario does. So, just like Spider-Man, there is an interesting dynamic when it comes to his reason and what he has to do in order to save others. As seen in Luigi's Mansion when he has to save Mario. He needs to conquer his own fears and face them so he can save his brother. This problem that he needs to solve and the underdog status already makes him a million times more interesting than Mario. And they even used him for interesting plot twists like turning him into an enemy as seen in Super Paper Mario with Mr. L. So here Luigi easily wins. Nintendo actually did something with him instead of just creating a husk that you can't even project yourself onto. Now for their powers and abilities. 
Here we need to keep in mind that Mario has been in more games, so of course there are more types for him. But the most important thing is the following. Good mechanics. The power-ups, moves and other stuff need to be fun and interesting. Now when it comes to ordinary movement like jumps, punches and flips, they're quite similar. In games like Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros and Super Mario World, they're the same. So there are no advantages to picking one or the other. But as time passed, they started to move away from each other and they developed their own specific playstyles. Mario ended up in the middle and was kind of average at everything, while Luigi has a higher top speed jump height and got a scuttle move. Now I'm not gonna use this to decide which one is better, because it's a playstyle and depends a lot on what you like. However, there's another thing I can judge them on. The good old GameCube days. Because besides that, they've both used the same power-ups, moves and were seen together in a lot of games. But back in the days of the glorious purple box, we had two games that showed off the differences between these two characters. Luigi's Mansion and Super Mario Sunshine. The first one is built around fear and exploration, with a completely new mechanic to battle enemies, the Poltergust 3000. While the other one is an open world platformer game based around completing missions and looking for collectibles with the new Flood. These two new items that Mario and Luigi use are the big new mechanics that have a huge impact on the game. So of course we're going to compare these two to see which one is better, because it says a lot about the whole character and almost everything else. In Super Mario Sunshine, Flood can be used by Mario to spray water at objects or enemies. By doing this, Mario is able to perform a multitude of tasks, ranging from enhancing his acrobatics to cleaning graffiti off of surfaces. There are a couple of different modes you can use like the squirt nozzle and either the hover, rocket or turbo nozzle. Using this you can perform all kinds of different moves like launching yourself in the air and gaining incredible speed. All of this can and is used in a game to create cool challenges for the player. It's a really good mechanic. Now the Poltergust 3000 is a vacuum used by Luigi to hunt down ghosts. To suck one up, Luigi first has to find their weakness, which usually involves his flashlight in some way, and exploit it. Once the ghost is open, Luigi needs to bring its health down to zero before it can be sucked into the poltergust and defeated. Later on it gains the ability to harness the elements of fire, ice and water to fight certain ghosts and solve puzzles. This is a really creative way to create progression, make special enemies and challenge the player. However, compared to Flood, it's extremely limited and not as creative. So in my opinion, Super Mario Sunshine does it better. But the story and overall vibe of Luigi's Mansion is a lot cooler and creative than Sunshine's. So when it comes to both of their powers and abilities, I would say it's a tie. They're extremely similar and it all depends on your playstyle. However, when it comes to the GameCube era, they really became their own characters with their own ideas. And Mario kind of won. Now for the final point, the design and animations. Which is actually quite an interesting one because Luigi used to be just a palette swap of Mario. Throughout the years, they haven't changed that much. However, there are clear differences between the two. The original design was Mario and Luigi was based on that. Up until the 3D era, not a whole lot changes and the biggest difference was the bit size. However, in the 3D and spin-off games, we start to see some differences. A good example seen in the main series is Tanuki Mario and Kitsune Luigi. This is a form that first appeared in Super Mario Bros 3 and comes from the Tanuki, an animal found in Japan and often depicted in folklore. Back then they both used the same design, but in Super Mario 3D Land, Luigi got the fox version, which looks a million times better. It's also extremely fitting for his tall and slender build, so here Luigi looks a lot better than Mario. And in spin-off games like the Mario and Luigi series, he wins again. If you just look at one of the cutscenes, you can see why. In those games, Luigi has a lot more interesting animations that play on the story and the dynamic among characters. This is the case in a lot of spin-off games where he is seen. This is mostly because of his personality, which compared to Mario, actually exists. So when it comes down to design and animations, Luigi wins again, because his character allows him to be more entertaining and expressive. Now who is our winner? Which brother is the better character and should be seen in more games? Well, 
It's Luigi. His character is so much better than Mario's. We know he can carry a franchise all on his own as seen with Luigi's Mansion, and when it comes to abilities and powers, he has a lot to offer. Personally, I don't understand why they don't use Luigi more often. He can bring a lot to the table, like an actual interesting and possibly funny character. Just look at games like Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi, where he is an extremely fun and interesting hero. Let's just hope we see our green, awkward plumber more in future Mario games. Thanks for watching every- Hey! Why don't you follow me on Twitter? Why don't you follow me on Instagram? Why don't you follow me on Twitch? I live stream there, it's tons of fun. Come on, go there. The links are in description. They're on the screen right now or in the comment section. What what are you doing here? <laughs>